You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. It's Behave with Arden Moore, the show that teaches you how to have harmony in the household with your pets. Join Arden as she travels coast to coast to help millions better understand why cats and dogs do what they do. Get the latest scoop on famous faces, their perfectly pampered pets, and who's walking who in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails. Garner great pet tips and have a doggone fur-flying fun time. So get ready for the pause and applause as we unleash your all-behave host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome to the O Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. The art of giving is ageless, and some of the best doggone givers on this planet sport wagging tails. Today, listeners, you're in for a very special show. That's because our guest is Melissa Joseph. She is the proud pet parent of one extraordinary therapy dog by the name of Baxter. His specialty? Bringing joy to hospice patients. Oh, and did I mention Baxter is 19 years old? That's right, 19. Welcome to the show, Melissa. Thank you. Hey, we're going to learn more about the magic of Melissa and Baxter right after this commercial break. So sit and stay. We'll be right back. Time for a pause. Four furry ones actually sit and stay. All behave, we'll be right back. It's time for school for you and your friends, your furry best friends. Train your dog the fun and easy way with Teacher's Pet Sessions. Teacher's Pet host Pia Silvani teaches you step-by-step how to train your dog the fun and easy way. You get eight 30-minute live audio training sessions, complete transcripts of each session, plus a basic training manual to get you and your dog off to a great start. Training begins the moment you bring your dog home. Teacher's Pet Sessions offers positive reinforcement training to shape your dog's behavior and encourages upbeat, enthusiastic responses to ensure that your dog will enjoy learning. Teacher's Pet Sessions dog training is fun at both ends of the leash. So listen, learn, and laugh with your dog with Teacher's Pet Sessions. Get your copy of Teacher's Pet Sessions Volume 1 today. To order, go to TeachersPetSessions.com. Hi, this is Pia Salvani, your host. Bring your dog, tug toy, and treats, and get ready to have some fun. TeachersPetSessions.com. When you're looking to add a pet into your life, consider adopting a homeless animal from your local shelter or rescue group. Whether you want a kitten, puppy, or a more mature pet, a purebred or a -a one-of-a-kind mixed breed, even a rabbit or hamster, your shelter has the best selection of animals anywhere, all screened for good health and behavior. PetLifeRadio.com presents Take Me Home with your host, Susan Daffron. Join us each week as we showcase wonderful pets, tell stories, and even throw some pet education into the mix. So get ready to find out why the pet adoption option can be a great way to add a furry companion into your life. Take me home every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. All Behave is back with more tail-wagging ways to achieve harmony in the household with your pets. Now back to your fetching host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome back to the O Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. A couple of weeks ago, I attended a pet event in Del Mar, California. There were dogs swimming in pools, dashing through obstacle courses, and plenty of them trying to use their best begging eyes to con their people out of the roasted porks on their dinner plates. All dogs, that is, except for one very special one. I spotted this dog with a cub-like face being scooted around in a red wagon. He sported a, a therapy dog jacket. In his own quiet way, Baxter unleashes love and comfort to people who need it most hospice patients 
And here with us today is Baxter's mom, Melissa Joseph. Welcome to the show, Melissa. Thank you for having me on your show. I'm so glad that Baxter and I were at that event, or maybe this wouldn't have happened. That's right. The, that was in the fates were, were there for us to meet. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's get right to the one amazing fact. Baxter is 19 years old, and I was doing a little digging, and, and uh, that's the equivalent of a 101-year-old person. So he's literally like the Methuselah of canines, and yet he's still on the job as a therapy dog. Yeah, he's on the job, and I think one of the reasons why he is still the age he is and is still plugging along really well is because he works. He has a mission, and he goes to work three days a week at least. Since he can't walk, he swims four days a week, and yesterday he had a record swim time of 40 minutes in the water nonstop. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm speechless. Oh, my gosh. So he can't walk, but he's like uh, the, a furry version of Michael Phelps, huh? Yeah, well, he's better looking than Michael Phelps would ever be with or without fur. Yeah, and he's not doing any bad things like smoking something he shouldn't be doing, right? He's being a good boy, no. right? He's pretty mellow. Most <laughs> people could think he's smoking something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, hey, folks, he's not. Baxter's clean. If you're a therapy dog, you have to he's be drug-free clean. when you go through your job, right? And he is drug-free. He's only on homeopathic meds. Wow. So he, he's really, um, he, he just had his senior blood panel today, and by Thursday I'll find out how wonderful that 19-and-a-half-year-old baby is. Yeah, that's great. I bet you've never been asked if your dog smoked a joint before on all these radio shows you've been on, right? So that's a first, huh? Yeah, and I'm glad they hadn't asked me, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he's a pretty famous dog, listeners. There's a new book that you have to get your paws around. It's awesome. It's called Moments with Baxter, Comfort and Love, the World's Best Therapy Dog. It is a book of love that was uh, written by Melissa Joseph, and many of the photos were by her husband, Dennis Bussey. A really good book, and, you know, his book generated this add a dog quote from the dog whisperer, Caesar Milan. Caesar said, Baxter's inspirational story reminds us how dogs can teach us to live fully in each moment, even if that moment may be our last. Wow, I think that my hairs are rising up on my, on my arm. That gives me chills a little bit. Baxter must give you a little bit of chills in some good ways, doesn't he? He gives me chills and he gives me tears and smiles. He gives me a lot of the emotional gamut. And I think I feel a little bit of that up and down scale with him every moment I spend with him because what he's shown me by his work at hospice, nothing else matters except the moment. And there are many, many things that happen around us that are rather trivial and yet We sometimes tend to put too much energy into those areas of life, forgetting about, you know, the only thing that really matters, which is, you know, the love between and among humans and dogs. Right. (laughs) Listeners, we had a little uh, technological hiccup in starting the show earlier, and uh, Baxter's mom, Melissa, just brought it right home. She goes, hey, no problems. I'm living in the moment. Just patience, right? (laughs) Yeah, you know, just very little matters. And, uh, you know, Baxter, because he can't walk anymore and he's so limited in his ability to take care of himself, he has this new way of communicating. He never did this until he became an, kind of an invalid in November of last year. And if he needs to mm-hmm. go to the bathroom or he needs food, whatever it is, he makes a little bark. And it's up to oh. me to figure out exactly how to placate him uh, and so we have this wonderful way, not just of communicating with our eyes now, but he's really talking to me. That's great. That's great. It's, now, he is a golden retriever chow mix, and when you look at him, he looks like a little cubby bear. The ears are like the cubs of a, of a bear. He's got those big caramel brown eyes, the button black nose. I mean, he just looks at it, and you're like, I want to hug that dog. I mean, he's got that that essence, I guess. So let's bring back a little background on Baxter for our listeners, if you would. Well, the phenomenal part about that, Arden, is that he wants you to hug him. And that's another Mm -hmm. reason why he makes such a phenomenal therapy dog. I put him in bed with patients. Uh, If the patient is not available, then he oftentimes is lying on a sofa with a family member or friend in the hospice room. Mm -hmm. And when he's Mm -hmm. in bed with a patient, he just has this ability to mesmerize the patient and change the moment. So if the moment mm-hmm. is grim or gloomy or the sadness and or pain, 
you know, whatever whatever that is, Baxter seems to extricate the patient from that particular psychological, physiological position into la la land. And all of a wow. sudden it's like everything is okay for a moment. Ten wow. moments with Baxter. I didn't mm-hmm. believe it. And I would journal and journal, and all of a sudden I thought, my God, I've got to tell people about my dog. He's really got a gift. And he continues to take people away Uh, from pain. And because he's kind of at the end of his life, he has this uncanny ability to identify with the patients or either have them identify with him. And oftentimes they'll say, oh, Baxter, do you feel bad today? Are you sick because you can't walk either? Come on over here, boy, mm-hmm. and get closer to me. And they talk to him like that. Well, they don't talk That's to their great. family and friends like that. They have a vested interest with their family and friends, and maybe they have uncomfortable history with their family and friends. But with Baxter, it's all fresh and new, and there's no attachment. It's kind of like the Buddha event. You know, you have this special mm-hmm. moment, but you're not attached to it. Yeah, so that's a very a insightful... Yeah. Uh, I wish I weren't were- so attached. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. no. There is a reason you are partnered with Baxter. I mean, all right, Melissa, I just want to get a little bit of background on yourself. I know I, I've got to be careful with my prepositions. Don't make them dangling because you used to be an English teacher, correct? Well, that's correct. But, you know, I just read an article that said that's all cool now. You can do that. I can say where is it at <laughs> instead so it's, of it's where old, is it. It's old, it's old school. You can do it. But besides okay, okay. the... the <laughs> yeah, besides the teaching, um, I opened five businesses in Jackson, Mississippi, and sold them not for profit, just I wanted to make something happen. And my last business was a pet boutique, and that's the centerfold of my pet boutique. And uh, it was not successful, and I'm not surprised because Jackson, Mississippi is not the <laughs> hippest place on the planet. But anyway, we did try to expose the world to the wonders of uh, human pet relationships, human dog relationships. You were just and ahead of your time. A little bit ahead of my time, and uh, I told people it was called Four Paws and a Pentax, and I spoke to a, a, a group of women in, a, in Jackson, Mississippi, an executive group, and they said, you know, Four Paws and a Pentax, we don't get it. And I said, you know, I should have called it Four Paws and a Tampax, and these people would have gotten it better because they don't know what a Pentax <laughs> is. They don't. You know, and everybody cracked up and said, you know, you're right, we don't know. So anyway, I closed the store, and I had all this inventory, and Baxter and I decided that we would donate all the proceeds from the, uh, I had an auction, and so we donated $250,000 to the Animal Rescue League in Jackson, Mississippi, and wow. uh, which was wonderful in honor of Baxter. So now, this project I'm doing now is the same kind of gig. I'm writing this book, and all the proceeds will be in memory of Baxter. And part okay. of the proceeds go back to San Diego Hospice, part of them go to the SPCA, and the other part goes to Humane Society. And, the Humane uh, Society you know, of have, the United States or the ASPCA, yeah, yeah. the Humane Society of the United States and the San Diego Hospice Center? In San Diego, exactly, exactly. Okay, I just want to make sure I got that all correct. Okay. Yeah. That is and so, great. And, you know, the whole thing is because of what Baxter's done for me in my life. And it's tremendous. Over and over again, he has shown me what really matters and put my life in perspective. And I have also found that he has shown me something so much greater than myself, besides him, um, but it's the gift of giving. And I know that mm-hmm. sounds corny, but when I am volunteering at San Diego Hospice with Baxter, I don't know who I am, where I am. I don't know yesterday. I don't know tomorrow. I'm completely, completely in the moment, and it's wow. fantastic. All my problems go away. All my pains go away. All my arthritis goes away, everything, and I'm just completely right there for someone else. You know what? Do you ever wish that more people would do that? I mean, I don't know how often you've been at a restaurant or something and you're having dinner with somebody and they're texting or they're getting a phone call or we multitask and it's almost like we're missing the moments. Oh, I'm positive of that. I think that we've we'll got a, a new generation that's coming in here and they actually speak a different language than I speak. I'm kind of, you know... I feel like I'm going to be, in the when I get very much older, if I have that opportunity to be Baxter's age, I'm really going to have a hard time fitting in because I don't operate. I'm a real emotional, touchy-feely, in-the-moment kind of person. And 
I do have a cell phone, and yes, I do have a computer, but I really believe that when I'm with someone, I should be with them, and I do not answer my phone in a public place. Never take mm-hmm. it into hospital. I would never take my cell phone into uh, somewhere like that. I mean, I just, and I can't believe how many people I'll be talking to them, and all of a sudden they answer their phone. Oh, just a minute. i got to take a phone call. Just kidding. I'm just kidding, Melissa. But I, I agree. <laughs> like, when I'm on a phone interview with somebody or I'm talking to a good friend, I have call waiting, but I always let it go to voicemail. Yeah. Because I feel like the person I'm speaking to has either called me or I called them. And even if it is the Pope or Bette Midler, who I'd love to have on the show, hint, hint, I won't take that call. I'll wait until I'm done, you know, because yeah. I just think it's kind of hard. I think we, we're, yeah, I think the moment is getting lost. And, and I feel very grateful that I've had this experience with Baxter and continue to have these experience, experiences where I am reminded of the significance of that but also mm-hmm. the powerfulness of human relationships. And, and mm-hmm. really, that's all that matters. All this other stuff that we collect, um, it's just, just eventually going to go to the landfill. But we, as humans, can make such a big difference in other people's lives by just giving. Let's talk a little bit about the book, Moments with Baxter. And um, I really appreciate you sending me a copy of this. The way it is, listeners, it's divided up in 36 special moments or chapters, and it's really beautifully uh, captured with photographs by your husband, Dennis Bussey. But one of my favorite stories is uh, Moment 16, and it's called Moe's Last Day. And I'm hoping, um, Melissa, you could share with our listeners a little bit about this woman and what was her dying wish that Baxter had a paw in playing to get it fulfilled. Her real name is Muriel Thorne, and she only had mm-hmm. one person in her life, which was her her niece. Everybody else had died in a tragic way. Her husband was dead as well, and he had been in that same room where she was at San Diego Hospice five years previously and had died there. And mm-hmm. she had a note on her door that said, 15-minute limit, except, and there was kind of an elliptical there, except for Baxter. And after she got to know Baxter... <laughs> She wanted Baxter in there for hours at a time, and she Mm -hmm. let us know that the most important thing in her life at the end of her life was to go see the Harry Potter film that was showing, the last Harry Potter film. And we said, well, surely we can figure out a way to do that. Sir Mo, that was her nickname, Miss and I brainstormed of how we could get her pain mitigated so that she could at least be some way launched from San Diego Hospice to the stadium seating at the theater, and she wanted to go to the one in Chula Vista because that's where all her friends were, and they were going to meet her at the theater. So we went mm-hmm. to the theater and talked to the manager and came back with the information, <laughs> and then we powwowed again, and we got it all you know, figured out with the hospice team, and we made her impact and all that, and she had it around her waist, and it was a beautiful situation. So we all arrive at Chula Vista at the same time, and you know, the Fox News is there, and some other channels are there, Channel 10 and 8. I don't know these other channels, but anyway, as she's telling everybody her story, she alludes to Baxter. She said, you know, my therapy dog and I are going to see the movies. <laughs> and this was my dying wish was to see this Harry Potter film. And wow. it was really a special, special arrangement that was made. And she said, Baxter and I are going to sit in the stadium seating and eat popcorn, and we're just going to love every moment of it. And they did, wow. and they loved every moment of it. And afterwards, after the news had broadcasted this, we brought the clip, we recorded it, and had it on a little DR because that's what they had at, at hospice at the time. They now have DVDs. But anyway, we recorded it. It only lasts 10 seconds and sat around in her room as if we were getting ready to you know, watch a long movie. And uh, <laughs> you know, we, the video clip was over before we ever you know, had three bites of popcorn. But she was completely elated at that. And what she told me next was, you know, that the only other thing I need to do now is finish the book because there had been a new book that had come out. And she said, I think I'm going to change the sign on my door. No one can enter except Baxter because I'm reading. And Oh, you know, my gosh. Was, he just had this special arrangement with, her, with him. And so when it was very near the end, no one supposedly could touch her body. And, and the nurses were mm-hmm. very protective of her. And they said every time they tried to you know, reposition her, whatever they could do to make her more comfortable, they found that they could not touch her because she would scream. So um, I mentioned that perhaps it would be a good idea to have Baxter at least beside her, and maybe that would bring her some comfort. 
And so at that point, Baxter was a lot more mobile than he is now, and I did put him beside her, but he managed to scoot himself on top of her. And the mm-hmm. wildest thing happened, she didn't scream. And Isn't that my, something? You know, my, my gut told me that obviously this was a good thing to have Baxter right with her, something she remembered, something she got comfort and joy from, you know, something that mitigated her anxiety and her pain. And it was the only person uh, with whom she could be peaceful. Everybody else, anybody else who touched her, tried to make contact with her, she would scream out. So there was something magical and memorable and momentous about Baxter's time with Mo Thorne. He was a true love uh, blanket to her, and yeah. more magic than Harry Potter could ever dream of. Exactly. So it was really a very sweet ending, and I'm so glad that I you know, took the liberty of putting him in bed with her, hoping that that would be a positive experience. And I really think, according to the niece, who was there, the only family member, it, is that it kind of gave her permission to die, that everything now had been taken care of, and she got to tell Baxter goodbye in her own way. And then after we left the room, she died. Wow. We're speaking with Melissa Joseph. She is the proud pet parent and partner of a remarkable therapy dog by the name of Baxter. Together, there's this wonderful book you've got to get. It's called Moments with Baxter. There's a website, momentswithbaxter.com, and all the proceeds are going to various charities. We're going to take a commercial break right now, and we'll be back with Melissa Joseph to learn more special moments with Baxter right after this. So sit and stay. We'll be right back. Time for a pause. Four furry ones actually sit and stay. Oh, behave. We'll be right back. Give your dog some thought. With Dog Thoughts, it's the iPhone application that everyone's talking about. Hey, what do you think of this? A man in Davis, California says he's invented an application for the iPhone that claims it can read your dog's mind. Huh? No, it's true. Now, I read about it on my cat's Twitter page. That's what I did. Jay Leno talked about it, CBS reported on it, and now you can see what all the buzz is about. Created just for dog lovers, Dog Thoughts makes taking photos of your furry best friend more fun. Shake your dog and read his mind. <gasps> on your iPhone, of course. Take a pic of your pup, shake your phone, and watch as his thoughts appear on the screen. Does he have a bone to pick with you, or is he having a tail-wagging day? Get your Dog Thoughts iPhone app today. Just 99 cents. Go to PetLifeRadioPromotions.com. That's PetLifeRadioPromotions.com. Greetings, human. What planet am I on? Welcome to Pet Planet. Here's a copy of Pet Planet Magazine, Florida's most informative and fun pet resource magazine. It features heartwarming stories and informative articles from local and national pet experts. Excellent. Pet Planet Magazine offers Operation Planet Rescue, helping rescued pets find new homes. And it's available at 500 locations in South and Central Florida and 24-7 on the Internet at PetPlanetMagazine.com. If you're out and about with your pet, you may be featured in paparazzi, candid pictures of you and your pet. For up-to-date pet-friendly events, activities, and pet-related services and products, Pet Planet Magazine is your final destination. I shall take this magazine home with me. Back to your home planet? No. To my condo in Boca. Pet Planet Magazine. Check them out at www.petplanetmagazine.com or 352-394-8578. It's out of this world. Hi, this is Marcy Davis and my service dog, Whistle, and we're your hosts of Working Like Dogs on Pet Life Radio. Working Like Dogs is the show where you can learn everything you ever wanted to know about working animals or working dogs. Whether you're a member of a working dog team or you've just seen a working dog or animal out at the mall or the grocery store and you're curious about how these amazing animals work with their human partners, then Working Like Dogs is the show for you. Join us for the inside scoop at Working Like Dogs on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. 
PetLifeRadio.com. Hi, this is Betty White, and I'm inviting you to tune in to the Behave Show with Arden Moore on Pet Life Radio. Old Behave is back with more tail wagging ways to achieve harmony in the household with your pets. Now, back to your fetching host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome back to the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Our special guest is Melissa Joseph with her dog, Baxter. They're spreading lots of love and joy all over the place, and particularly for people who are hospice patients in the San Diego area. There's a great book you got to check out. Moments with Baxter. You will laugh and you will cry. I promise you, because I did that. And you can get the book anywhere. It's uh, but check out their website, momentswithbaxter.com. And I think it's a very special gift that really, really embraces and illustrates and illuminates the special bond we have with our pets. You know, Baxter's done a lot of good for the hospice patients, Melissa. But uh, I know his nickname is Dr. Love. Tell us a little bit about his relationship with the hospice staff members. You know, I, I try to make things very funny. I always wanted to be a comedian, and mm-hmm. I, I, always, I used to tell my students that this was the best job I could get, you know, teaching <laughs> them. But I really wanted to do something a lot more fun than that. One day I was at hospice, and I saw this kind of yellow plastic stethoscope hanging from a doorknob. And I thought, okay, I know what I'm going to do. And I put it in Baxter's ears and put it around <laughs> his neck. And all of a sudden, it became Dr. Love. You know, it became okay. like, okay, Baxter's going to be transformed into now Dr. Love. And I went over to one of my favorite doctors, Dr. Chad. And naturally, they all had their little stethoscope around them. And I said, oh, look, you know, Baxter's just like you. He's donning a stethoscope. And and he needs to listen to your heart to see how you're feeling today. And so Dr. Chad, because he loves Baxter, just like all the other staff members, completely indulged me in this foolishness, <laughs> which really isn't foolishness. It's, it's fun and games in an environment that needs fun and games. Absolutely. And so, you know, he went for the whole thing. And um, so the story, you know, there's a story that, somewhat revolves around him as well as another patient but what goes on is that you know we start having Baxter and Dr. Chad start having this communication and so as Dr. Love takes his heart you know and it listens to his heart and takes his pulse and said you know I think you're going to live a very long time I I think you have a lot of love in your heart and and Dr. Chad said oh well you know Dr. Love thank you so much and and (laughs) you know well well, you kind of you know and then Dr. Chad turns to Dr. Love and said you kind of smell good and Dr. Love says, well, you don't, Dr. Chad. I don't want to be ugly or anything, you know, this kind of thing. And maybe you've been rolling in the grass too much, you know, and all this kind of stuff. So they have this little communication going on. And then a nurse appears and said, you must go to room 102, Dr. Love. You must, you must. So all of a sudden we leave right. with this stethoscope still in, and we go to this patient's room where we had been before. And we didn't think we had a great impact on her, but we must have because she requested Dr. Love. Oh and my so gosh. we go into the room, and I, you know, we do the whole Dr. Love Act all over again, and she completely loves it. And I said, well, would you like Baxter in bed with you? She said, no, this is close enough. And I said, well, he needs to listen to your pulse. And we <laughs> listen to her pulse, and as she opens her arm, extends her arm, I see that she's clutching a photograph of her husband. Oh, my gosh. And she's recently lost her husband, and now she's in hospice, and she's really sick because she's grieving so much. She's not yet yeah. dying, but she's just she feels like she's dying because she's lost her love. And so we kind of make a little skit with her and very improvisational, which is I would say kind of my technique there, and it worked beautifully. And again, oh, Baxter is the medium for which I am able to extend myself to other people. And without him, none of this would be possible. Absolutely. Now, I know so, March 23rd 2010 is going to be a very special date in history, and why is that? Well, Baxter will be 20 years old, but we found out recently July 21st is now a special day in history in the city of San Diego. It's known now as Baxter Day. Oh, my gosh. Wow. He, got that a, is he, he was invited down to the city hall on July 21st, uh-huh. and we were told by the supervisor, Pam slater Price. Right that Baxter was now going to be very famous and is now <laughs> known as Baxter Day in, the, in San Diego. And he got this beautiful plaque, and everybody in the chamber stood up and clapped. 
and oh all these gosh. photographs were taken of him. <laughs> Very special. So they're on his blog. Some of these photographs are on Baxter's blog. So that, uh, now, yeah. that's a pretty good deal. You know, Baxter Day, isn't the city of San Diego the friendliest city, or is that the, the right? The finest. The finest. The finest city. Now yeah. it's the fur finest with Baxter yeah, Day. Yeah, the fur finest. And so that was a real special treat, and it just so happened that my father was in town, and he came as well, and we made a little speech, and Baxter said it felt like he was getting an Oscar. <laughs> and, and he now, he now, you know, he's he's ready to go put his uh, paw print in the concrete in in L.A. Yeah, but, move uh, over Merle Streep. We got Baxter. Th- exactly. But but to answer your question about you know March twenty third, um, yeah, I mean it, it. You know, it will be a very special day. I'm kind of a low key person when it comes to that kind of stuff. I just want to give him, uh, you know, filet mignon and a and a really big juicy porterhouse steak bone. And nice. uh, let him just let him indulge. Right now, he's um he's been eating. A, I get him these little frozen bones at the mm-hmm. some healthy choice pet store. He loves them. They're supposed to be very good for their for their teeth and for the plaque on their teeth. And so good. he's prone in bed with a pillow in between his two front legs, and he's got his mouth on top of this bone. <laughs> that's heaven. <laughs> that's heaven on earth for a dog, don't you think? And he's in the bed. With yeah. Me. yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's divine. It's it's you know what it's mutually divine. If you want to know the truth, I I enjoy so much watching him and watching him have pleasure that it's it's a, just a wonderful situation. Well, we've been listening to Melissa Joseph. She and Baxter have been doing a lot of good for many people. You got to check out their website, Moments with Baxter dot com. The book is called Moments with Baxter, and. You know, all the proceeds are going to the San Diego Hospice, the Humane Society of the United States, and the ASPCA, correct? Correct. All right. Well, we want people to check it out because when I saw you and your dog at that event, a uh, local event in Southern California, I fell in love with Baxter. So his he's got rock star abilities because you just want to go up and just hug him. He's got the cutest bare face. I got to admit, I'm I'm holding the ears of my two cute dogs, Chipper and Cleo, so there's no canine jealousy. But oh my God, he smokes other dogs with his looks. I've really not seen a dog that looks quite like Baxter. No, <laughs> I, I, and I have looked for backup plan. I'm, you know, I need a yeah. backup plan. But I really think Baxter for me, he just he's one of those. It's that look that just Talk about chemistry. Uh, it's just all over him. He's just, there's not a person that doesn't stop to say hello to Baxter. Well, you know, even a, a guy like Joe Camp, who's famous uh, for being the author of The Soul of a Horse, and more people may know him because of his connection with that cute, adorable Benji. dog, Benji. He yeah. even said in your book, it is a testimony to the powerful connection between pets and people. So at this time, Melissa, I can't declare Baxter Day for the city of San Diego, but for on Pet Life Radio, we can declare this the Baxter Melissa Day. And you mark that down for August 11th, 2009. We humbly would like to honor you guys as our Baxter Day on our network, which has like a million different shows. So there you go. We'll have to come up with a plaque or something. But you, well, you we both re- do we really wonderful Baxter, things. Baxter, and I'll speak on behalf of Dennis, who who truly mm-hmm. put some remarkable photographs of, of Baxter yes. that just really demonstrates his connection to Baxter. I really appreciate your your exposing us to the world, and we we hope that that people will enjoy Baxter's book and and maybe want to turn their dog into a therapy dog. It's the greatest experience I've ever had in my whole life. That's well put. Well, we're going to end on a good note, and I want to thank you again. You give that adorable love giver with uh, the cutest button nose a hug from me from Chipper, Kelly, Cleo, and Murphy, my furry fab four. And uh, for all you listeners out there, take heed to what Melissa said. If you have a dog and you have this wonderful connection and your dog loves to love, that dog just might turn out to be a good therapy dog. There are some certain criteria you have to go through, but it's all well worth it. And it's a way of giving back. In this day of everybody multitasking, it's nice to find a wonderful story about a woman and her dog who are living, sharing, and embracing the moment with others who are at their greatest need in life. So, Melissa, a big pause up to you and Baxter, and I thank you for being on the show. And I also want to thank... Oh, you're welcome. I love your accent. And I want to also thank uh, Mark Winner, my cool producer. He keeps his show humming each and every week. 
I invite you to check out all the shows on Pet Life Radio. We cover everything. So until next time, this is your flea free host, Arden Moore, delivering just two words to all you two, three, and four leggers out there. Oh, behave! Coast to coast and around the world, it's Oh Behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. Oh Behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Every week on demand, this is the place for a special paparazzi treat. Only on PetLifeRadio.com.